strutting your strings in outer space. You should look at the new Super 7 Silverhawks Ultimates Bluegrass. Bluegrass is the only Silverhawk whose cyborg enhancements don't include wings or built-in weapons, but he's an ace pilot who, with his Hotlicks guitar and bird partner Sidemen, help keep Limbo safe from Monstar and his mobsters. This made-to-order 7-inch fully articulated Silverhawk's Ultimates figure of Bluegrass features premium detail and comes with interchangeable heads and hands, a variety of other accessories including Hotlicks guitar, a pair of lassos, and a trio of Sidemen figures. Rocketing through the sky with a little rock and roll before we get a closer look at bluegrass from the brand new Silverhawks Ultimates line. Of course, we're going to grab our tape measure. My tape measure seems to be coming apart on the end. I may have to order myself another one. In the meantime, though, my problems with tape measures aside, bluegrass in this case actually is six and a half inches in height. That's including his mohawk on the top. Or the figure is also about 16 and a half centimeters tall. Seeing as this is also the second Silverhawks figure we've looked at, sorry for spitting on everybody doing that, uh, we can actually at least now have a comparison. So I'm going to slide over the bluegrass that we're about to have a look at, and we're going to bring in Monstar. I don't know why I have to keep saying it like that. Monstar, as he fittingly should be, is a lot taller than bluegrass. Maybe he could have been a lot taller. Uh, it, obviously, in the cartoon, I think he towers over all the Silverhawks, so at least he is taller than bluegrass. Could have been a little bit taller, yes, but I'm sure he's going to be a lot taller when we eventually get the robotic version of Monstar. Speaking of Monstar, though, unlike Monstar, Bluegrass's accessories fill this entire space. I'm going to do my best to go through each of these individually, and then we'll have a little bit of discussion about each and everything. Okay, maybe not a lot of discussion, but we're going to talk a little bit about each thing. First of which, the figure, did I say first of which? First of which, the figure comes included with Sideman times three. Sideman is his bird that he eventually gets later into the seasons or series. Uh, you can see his well. This is a bird that's kind of more squared shape because eventually he does actually become the guitar. Well, at least in this state, he doesn't. This is a more perched version of Sideman. But if you prefer to have Sideman with his wings fanned out, then you get that version of it as well. The face sculpts are similar, except for the one that actually has the wings out. It does have a more screeching head sculpt. Uh, both of them actually, I thought, do, did have a head articulation. I mean, I can rotate this one back and forth. But the one that actually has the wings out, I can't rotate it. And it's really tight. I'm also hurting myself because the top of its crest, of its head, keeps digging into my flesh before I start drawing myself any bit of blood. The detailing on both of them are pr pretty much identical. Bodies seem to be shared between the two. And they also attach onto Bluegrass's forearms the exact same way. You don't even have to change anything really to Bluegrass as, is, as it is right now. Just bring his arm out. And then you can take yourself side man. Let's take, you know what? Let's not take the one that has the wings out. Let's take the regular one. And that just easily snaps onto his forearm. Snapping is not usually a word I would like to describe when it comes to figures, but in this case it does. It snaps right onto his forearm, and it could survive the blizzard test. You could tip that upside down, and Sideman isn't going to go anywhere. If you, though, prefer to have Sideman more like a guitar, getting bluegrass to stand, I hope, in the meantime, he does actually have a variation of Sideman that actually is already transformed into the guitar. Uh, the one that's the most resembling that is the one that actually is just the perch version of Sideman. But you can see basically it just extends out the neck and then you got yourself a brand new guitar. Some assembly was required, in fact, for Sideman and actually the other guitar, the Hot Licks, did also require the strap, the shoulder strap to have to be attached. It attaches where you have to stretch it over top of the knobs. <clears throat> We attach it on both the sides. You actually have to do that also as well for side licks. Uh, once that's in place, of course, then you can fit that very easily over top of his shoulder. Just stretch that across. And then you can have the figure displayed with side man. Now, I myself, when it comes to displaying bluegrass, I don't know why he's 
balancing so much of an issue. When it comes to certainly displaying bluegrass, I would much rather prefer to display him with hot licks. Hot licks is really the guitar I think of right away when I think of bluegrass in the series. Uh, this one actually is neat because not only does it have the shoulder strap that attaches, I can't help but also notice I've got a little bit of like plastic problems, just a little bit of plastic. I guess when it came off the mold, it left a little bit of, I don't know, a little piece of plastic piece popped off. I don't know. Anyways, you just attach this the exact same way. And this again fits around his shoulder, or you can also use a couple of effects that go along with it. He's got this beam, this laser beam that's made of use of translucent uh, blue plastic on the very end of the nozzle here, the neck of the guitar, you'll see there's a little hole. The hole wasn't actually there. Well, it was and it wasn't, and I'm not trying to speak riddles. The hole was there, but it was covered over with a little bit of extra unnecessary plastic. So I ended up having to take the laser and sort of dowel myself what would have been the hole underneath. And once that's finally in place, he does actually have the means to shoot the laser from the end of the guitar. Hot Licks, though, also does... I keep thinking I'm complimenting somebody. I don't know if I would ever compliment somebody but call them hot licks. Anyways, though, he does also have one of my favorite things to, to include with this, the stream of musical notes. I've got that backwards, the stream of musical notes. This has been accomplished by using a clear plastic and then they've painted the actual chord. What would you call that? Not the chords, but the part the notes sit on top of. Painted that nicely in blue and then painted each of the individual notes nicely in white. This doesn't attach the way that you would think it would attach. You would think it almost would go this way, but the only way that it actually does fit is it fits on the end of the neck just like that. It doesn't actually have what I can see at least to be a peg. So it actually fits more where, where this is actually fitting inside the hole and it just clamps over top. It meaningly, it doesn't hold very well. I've tried to flip this around both ways and in both the cases, it doesn't seem like it holds as well as it should. I almost probably would have put a little post there instead. Instead of going the hole, I would have actually added a little lip of plastic, similar to what we got with the laser, and I would have actually attached it that way because I just don't feel like the weight of this, it holds as well as it should. Anyways, hot licks. <laughs> let's go ahead and remove the guitar, shall we please? And let's put that to the side. Now, one thing that's also neat about the figure, we're gonna get back to hot licks in a second. The figure also comes included with a couple of lasso. Would it still be plural lasso or to be lasso? I think it's still lasso. This one actually is the more wider of the two. This is actually a, a posed version of the lasso, which actually does have the loop that rotates. This looks like it's attached by peg. I don't know why it has to rotate, but it rotates anyways. And this just fits around his hand. You could do the old school way of trying to fit this around his fingers and it doesn't even look like he's actually holding it, but he also does have also a gripping hand. So you can clip the lasso in place. Let's clip it the right way at least. Clip it in place like that and he can actually hold the lasso. The lasso is pretty big though, so it's not as heavy granted as the musical notes that attach onto hot licks, but at least it, well, yeah, it holds somewhat okay. If you though prefer your lasso, lasso, it's lasso. If you prefer it though wrapped up, he does have a version of that as well. It doesn't look, it kind of looks like it should attach to something and yet there's nowhere on the figure's body that actually the lasso attaches onto. I don't even think in the cartoon he has the lasso attached to anything but there's no place to actually store that. So you, if anything, you would just have that looped around his hand as if he's just wound up, rolled up the lasso. The other thing the figure comes included with is quite a multitude of interchangeable hands. Right now, admittingly, he has just sort of relaxed hands that aren't gonna be doing much of anything. The figure also comes included more relaxed on this side. He comes with a flatter hand. So I guess you could have him saluting if you would wish. The figure also comes included with, while we're talking about the skin side of his body, comes with a thumbs up hand. It's always good to have a good thumbs up hand. The figure also comes included with a strumming hand. Now for this, actually, I should really bring back the guitar. The guitar, for example, like if you had it flipped this way, you could then turn, well, I guess you wouldn't be able to turn around the other way, but this side would actually be so awkward. It would actually be, have to be strung this way, I suppose, if he wants to of course, attach it onto that side of his figure's body. Now, this one actually looks like he's supposed to be holding it like, like this, but it would involve you having to flip the guitar around the other way. And the only thing about that is by flipping it around, the shoulder strap, yeah, you could turn the shoulder strap, I suppose, the other way, but it's going to obviously be getting in the way of the main body of the, of the guitar. So you can attach the hands this way, and then you can have the strunging guitar on this side with this hand here. One thing I actually do like to have him displayed is actually flip the guitar the right way. And the reasoning for that 
is because, let me just grab it here, the figure has actually a hand that holds an invisible pick. I don't know if he actually had gotten this from Wonder Woman, but he has a hand that actually has an invisible pick. And this is the better one, I think, for strunging the guitar. And then, of course, you're just going to take your figure, fit this around the figure's body. Let's actually get it first up his arm. Fit this around his neck. Swap the hand out. Just re easily remove it. I didn't have any problems actually removing the hands, unlike the Monstar we looked at before. And then he has the invisible pick strunging hand. And of course, for this side, he's going to want to be able to still hold the guitar. So he comes with a whole multitude of different hands for this side, too. If you prefer a still thumbs up on this side, then he has also the, I guess, the Amar armored up, the Silverhawk body arm armor. He has that as a thumbs up hand also. The figure has a closed fist. But then he also has a hand that's specifically for holding the guitar. Now you can choose one, two things. You can have this one where it's just a gripping hand, or you can have this one that's got a little bit more personality. Also, it looks like it's a little bit more arthritic too. And then for there, let's go ahead and just remove this hand from this side. Pop then the replacement hand in and complete the look. Let's just bend the elbow, bring the hand around to fit on the notes. And then we can take then the hand that has the invisible pick and you can have Bluegrass looking like he's stringing the guitar. That looks cool. It probably actually looks like he's holding more of a gun than anything else. Let's just bring that down a little bit. There we go. And then from there, obviously, to go back to the notes we looked at earlier, it's attached onto the lasso. Let's just attach this onto the end of it. And that's going to make for a rather nice display. If, again, only the fact this could attach a little bit better than what it does. Remove that to the side and put that to the side. And actually, let's just bring the guitar and move that out of the way too. The last of Bluegrass's accessories don't necessarily involve me having to straighten out his arms, but we're going to straighten out his arms for right now. The figure comes included with, of course, his hat. It would seem so awkward if he didn't actually have his hat. And he doesn't wear the hat all the time in the series. But one thing I do actually like that Super 7 did, it almost looks like it would hold coins. You would just drop quarters in. <laughs> no, you don't. This little canal here fits rather nicely over top of Bluegrass's mohawk you can see right there you just fit that over top and because of that it actually holds really well when it holds like instead of actually just using friction friction would have been the easiest route to have gone but by actually sculpting that little canal on the inside that looks like it should hold change it actually does a much better job of fitting over top of bluegrass's head now you can have it higher up you can also have it a little bit lower down as well it's entirely up to you and while we're also on the topic of holding the figure here let's just remove hot licks for right now the figure also comes included with a couple of interchangeable heads the one that's the closest to the one we have right now is this one right here not only does it look a lot like bluegrass but i think it looks a little like arthur from dragon's lair Ooh, that would be a line i would love to see super seven approach but this one is very similar other than the fact it does have a higher eyebrow on one side and he does also have a little kind of a one curled smile on the other side Actually, I like this one. I think of the of the three heads that come included with Bluegrass, this is my favorite by far. There's also this one too, which really is, to be fair, a really good head sculpt too. It has, in this case, a winking eye and a big smile on his face. Changing out the heads, one thing you will want to be careful of is his, uh, his neck band here. His, what do you call that? I'm drawing a complete blank. His handkerchief? His handkerchief? It's just going to hold on to it. Hold on to it for dear life. Uh, there is a little bit of paint, unfortunately, that has flaked off mine. I think it actually came out of the packaging like that because I barely touched this handkerchief. While holding this, getting the name at least right, let's pop that new head in place. And once again, you're just going to have to wiggle it back and forth if you're having any problems to do this. There you go. You can also heat this up in hot water. And there you go. Have the eyebrow a little bit higher here. Head sculpt is fantastic on this. Looks very much like the cartoon counterpart. Now, again, I hear you. I hear all of you. I, I, I really can't. I actually got to whisper 2000. But I know one of the things that some of you guys had real problems with was the fact that they decided to go the route of cartoon look rather than the 80s toy line. I honestly like myself having these look more like the cartoon, like the Thundercats we looked at before, like the Simpsons that we looked at before as well. I like this to look like the cartoon. And by doing that, it looks very much like the cartoon. It's not to say that we don't get ourselves a toy line version of Silverhawks down the road in the same in the same way, really, as the toy line LGAN a Thundercats Lino, we just recently had a look at here on this channel, because they have branched off the Thundercats line to not only dedicate it towards the cartoon, but dedicate it towards the original 80s toy line, they might even do the very same thing here for the Silverhawks. 
They probably will give them a brand new head sculpt, but I don't think they're going to do a vac chrome finish. Foam, chrome, not foam, chrome does not stay on a figure's body. If you ever have anything that has chrome, I don't have silver hawks. I may have even had one silver hawk growing up, but I had a lot of a lot of transformers. Transformers were notorious for like the chrome chipping off. I'm glad that they actually used instead the coloring that best resembles the way it looks in the cartoon. And the blue looks really good on this one. There's not a lot of detailing just because the majority of his body is just the armor that he has over top. Again, you got the nice little mohawk that he has on the top. Sculpting is nicely handled here on the ears. I don't know still why this handkerchief has this blue. It almost doesn't even look like it's chipped. It looks rather like it's actually got a little bit of blue paint. Might have been the way that they painted it in the factory. It just a little bit ended up on the handkerchief for some strange reason. Detailing, though, on the figure overall is really nicely handled. Bluegrass of the Silverhawks is a more thinner build character and translates really well here for a figure. Now, again, when we look a little bit lo lower down, he does have sort of these space cowboy boots, which has some really nice additional silver trim that doesn't seem to make any other appearance anywhere else on the figure's body. One thing I did also want to say about the quality of plastic. I've had a couple of Super 7 figures where I've kind of questioned the plastic quality. The one here for, for Bluegrass, and especially even when we looked at the Monstar from before, plastic seems really good on these figures. For the articulation on Bluegrass, starting first with his head sculpt, normally this would have killed the figure, killed the character. But in this case, you can rotate, rotate the head all the way around. Head does look up, and it looks down, and you can also rock it back and forth as well. As for the arms, the arms come out, I wouldn't necessarily say comfortably at 90 degrees. They come out, but they come with a little bit of fighting to force those up. You can take those arms and rotate them all the way around. The figure does have a bicep swivel. The figure also possesses only strangely a single hinge in the elbow. What you can see right now is unfortunately one problem I have with the figure. There always seems to be one thing that's loose on these Super 7 figures. Normally it's legs. Bluegrass, unfortunately, I guess in this case, does not have loose legs, but unfortunately, it has to be in the elbows. Why do you have to have anything loose on him? I have to ask myself this. Hands rotate also all the way around. You can hinge them back and forth. Upper torso is on a ball joint. Lower torso is on a ball joint. I mean, you really can't do too much with the articulation. I mean, let's let's bring it back. That's <laughs> it doesn't even look like I've really moved it. That's as far forward as you can get it. That's as far back as you can get it. Almost doesn't look like I moved it at all. Where more the articulation comes to play is actually where you'd be able to rotate it. But even then, you can only rotate it that far and that far. The lower torso, at least, just above the belt, is actually a lot more forgiving when it comes to the articulation. You can move it up and down, a little bit back and forth, but much, much more rotation. Legs do split out. Um, if you're also wondering, the this part right here is more of a softer plastic. It doesn't, I don't think, gives you as much the illusion that it looks like a, a diaper. I know sometimes these look like figure diapers. I don't think it looks as much like a figure diaper because it's really conformed and shaped to the lower legs. Speaking of the legs, though, they go move forward, they move back. Um, when you do drop them down, obviously, you can kind of see the workings behind the scenes. Figure does, does have a single hinge in the knee. Although looking at it, it almost looks for a second like he should have a double hinge, but it actually only hinges right there. Leg does swivel back and forth. The feet go up and down, and there's a nice ankle rocker as well. Other than the one issue I have with one really loose arm, it's this one right here. This one's not, not as bad. I don't think, again, like these figures, to get them out of the packaging at a $55 figure of what they start at, not to mention, again, the shipping and all the fun stuff that goes along with it, I don't think the figure should be this loose, or at least loose in the arm. Hours, only hours after I've had this guy out of the packaging, Plastic is good, but it still falls into that same problem that Super 7 seem to be known for. Good looking figures, but then loose joints for no reason whatsoever. Bluegrass should not have a loose elbow joint, should not have a loose forearm this side, considering for how long I've actually had this figure out of the packaging. This, of course, is going to cause a little bit of also problems when it comes to not only him being displayed with Wingman, but also if you wanted to display him with Hot Licks, Hot Licks, and if you want to add the musical note accessory that attaches onto the end neck of it. Though it is the look I prefer, it's not the look that's unfortunately going to stay, at least here for final looks. Fifth time's the charm of having this guy spinning around in the rotisserie, and that more musical note's just because the weight of it, and so much weight of it, is on the end of it. Of course it has to be. It doesn't stay well enough onto the neck of the guitar, and it has fallen off. It 
well, fifth times the charm of actually having a look at this guy in final looks. I do wish I could have attached differently, not just by having the end nozzle of the guitar fitting inside the hole of the musical notes, but rather the opposite way around. The laser effect works a lot better by having a longer post that goes into the guitar. I wish they could have done something very similar. And maybe they didn't do that because they knew the worry of the weight of the, of the end of the notes would have just been too much and would have snapped the peg. Maybe that's why they decided not to do this. This guy will look certainly better on the shelf, not rotating the way that he is with the musical notes intact. I can only hope it stays like that for a while. The figure looks fantastic though. And honestly, I understand why a lot of people had the problems of saying that like these guys should have had vac chrome finish. Yes, yes, if you wanted to base it from the original toy line. Clearly the direction that Super 7 want to go with their Silverhawks is more geared towards the cartoon resemblance, not necessarily the figure line. And while a lot of people would have said I would have been more open to the idea of vac chrome finish on these figures, it's a deal breaker to me. That's what the other person would be saying. It's not a deal breaker to me at all. I want these characters to look right from the pulled from the screen of the TV series from the 80s. I don't want them to look like their vac chrome finish. I don't want them to look like dated looking figures with just better articulation. As with Super 7 has done already with their Simpsons line and have they done very well already with their Thundercats ultimate figures. Again, I want these guys to look like their cartoon counterparts. Maybe down the road, you never know, we might get ourselves a spin-off series like they've done with the Thundercats where we might get toy versions of Bluegrass or any one of the other Thundercats or any other Silverhawks figures. But for right now, I'm enjoying the fact that they look like their cartoon counterparts. And with as many things that come in clue with Bluegrass as he does, the hardest thing is really just to decide, well, I want to have this guy displayed. Ultimately, it will mean after this review, I'm going to have to pack everything back into those trays that the come include with these figures. Sometimes I spend just as much time after these reviews putting things away as it took me at the beginning of the review to, of course, take everything out. Uh, certainly when it comes to bluegrass, though, I did want to look at this guy first. Then we're going to look at the rest of the Thundercats. Strangely, again, enough, this guy is actually from Wave 2, not Wave 1. I would have liked to start this whole thing with wave one, but c'est la vie. We've got ourselves now wave two to start having a look at. We're now two figures down. We're going to look at the other two figures. If you guys are interested and would like to get your hands on Bluegrass, Monstar, or any of the other two Thundercats figures that we are going to be looking at in upcoming reviews, take a deep breath. You can actually click the links down below in the video description that will take you on over to Entertainment Earth, where I actually did find Bluegrass, where I did actually find Monstar, and where I did actually find the other two figures from wave two of Silverhawks Ultimates. Click the links down below if you guys are interested to get this one for yourself. What do you guys think, though, of Bluegrass? Let me know down below in the comments section. And certainly, as well, if you guys enjoyed this video, want to hit with a like. You guys are loving the content you guys are seeing. And certainly on board to see the other two Silverhawks reviews. Make sure you're coming back to this regular this channel on a regular basis, that you're hitting the subscribe button. Yes, that you're turning on the bell notification. But most importantly, come back. Because there's always going to be new content coming your way. As always, guys, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.